Happy 4th of July! Yay, Independence Day! Yeah, boy, last night there was a lot of fireworks going on out there. And again, so the Lord wants to get some fireworks going on inside us, get, get us reconnected. So pull up your cup of coffee and uh, let's see what the Lord's going to do here. And let's invite him to join us as we begin in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. While Jesus was speaking, an official came forward, knelt down before him, and said, My daughter has just died, but come, lay your hand on her, and she will live. Jesus rose and followed him, and so did the disciples. A woman suffering hemorrhages for twelve years came up behind him and touched the tassel on his cloak. She said to herself, If only I can touch his cloak, I shall be cured. Jesus turned around and saw her and said, Courage, daughter, your faith has saved you. And from that hour the woman was cured. When Jesus arrived at the official's house and saw the flute players and the crowd who were making a commotion, he said, Go away! The girl is not dead, but sleeping. And they ridiculed him. When the crowd was put out, he came and took her by the hand. And the little girl arose. And news of this spread throughout the land. The gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Whoa, there's quite a journey going on here, even bef- some of it before. So open up your Bibles to like re- read chapter 8 of Matthew and 9. It'll take you on this journey. So start to think about he, he healed the paralytic. Thinks about the times when we are paralyzed, okay? Fear paralyzes us. Fear, anxiety paralyzes us. I mean, it stops us from doing what God wants us to do. It connects us to all of our attachments and and pulls us away from our journey and our intimacy with God. But then there's that love. So Jesus heals the paralyzed man, just like he wants to heal us of the things that paralyze us. And then he he starts to talk about the new wineskin and the new wine. So the new wine is Jesus getting that intimate relationship with him. And, and, and then, but you've got to change your old ways. That means you've got to put on new skin. And so if you're going to let that new wine come in, and that's the verse right before our gospel. You've got to get that. And, and then, then you're going to journey with the crowd. Look what happens. They turn their hearts to God. And look what happens. They're becoming, allowing that new wine in. The, 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 the crowd comes in and they come close to Jesus. It's hard for the hemorrhaging woman to even get close to Jesus. She has to work her way through the crowd. And she knows that he can heal her. She's been going to all these doctors for years. And all these medical things, trying all these things. And nothing has happened. But now. She wants to get connected. And the crowd is turning to this faith. And they're putting their belief in Jesus and their faith in him. So as that crowd journeys toward where the little girl has died, and and, and the father comes before him and prostrates before Jesus, he knows what Jesus can do. He has faith in that intimacy with God. He's no longer paralyzed. And then the crowd, and that faith increases. See why you want to be connected to community? Oh, really? Yeah. That's why we want to go to church. We want to be in community around other believers so that something happens when that portal of faith increases with all of us. My faith affects you, and your faith affects me. And so the hemorrhaging woman Reach, she knows all she has to do is reach through all this faith. And as she does, 
It's like her new wineskin comes on her, and she reaches out and touches the hem of his garment. And when she does that, she's healed immediately. And he says, you know, he felt the power go out of him. Didn't that say in Mark? He felt that power come out of him. And again, but now you have this community of believers, and they're making their way toward the little girl's house. And so when you are connected to God in that intimacy and you join others in prayer, there's great power in that. That faith increases and great signs and wonders increase. And again, so the little girl, even those who are dead can be risen again. So look at what happens. All he does is grab her hand. And there's such faith there with the whole community. The new wineskin, the new wine, that relationship within. I have to change what's on the outside. I can no longer go to my attachments. I want to be attached and touch Jesus. Make note what happens after this. Because the hemorrhaging woman must have been telling others what happened because after this, you keep hearing over and over again that people came, kept coming up and just touching the hem of his garment. Jesus didn't have to lay his hands on them. All you had to do is reach up and touch the hem. And again, and, and healings happen. And again, so you want to get connected to that faith and intimacy. Right after this, he heals blind people. And two blind guys. And, and, and then after that, someone who can't speak. So you want to be able to speak. When you get connected to that intimacy, see the journey from paralyzed? The fear paralyzes us. And again, and, and uh, you see the, the journey and, and what faith does and where our beliefs are aligned are so important. So you got something to think about here today. Open up your Bible and spend time in it today. It's going to be like fireworks within you. And so that you can develop and allow that new life, that relationship, come into you so you can be a new wineskin. God bless you and have a great 4th of July. As I say, the Lord be with you and with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Have a great 4th. God bless you.